Hello everyone I am Sanjeev Pandya welcoming you to the I on a White House show this is the Radio Zindagi initiative which you can hear it on Radio Zindagi and the Radio Zindagi social platforms as well as watch it on TV5 Mana TV Mana TV International India Live TV Aaj Tak TV and Daily Hunt which is one of the most popular OTT platforms in India once again we are so happy to be with you let me begin with the very popular saying that it ain't over till it's over today in the panel mr rohit vyas mr vibhuti ja and mr shobhan saxena good to have you gentlemen thank, thank you sanjeev good to be here so as i say that election 2020 is it really over or uh, what's going to happen and who would like to take it from there okay if you'd like i could i could start the election is over that that's very clear the election is over um do we have a winner do we not have a winner in these couple of days that we've been all getting together discussing things we have an apparent winner all right will that hold will that hold the precedents have been set in the past in several decades uh, gone by there has been precedents uh, for things like this situations like this i mentioned to you the last time in 1876 there were challenges as to who was the president that was in the case of governor rutherford b hayes of ohio and uh, samuel tilden the governor of new york at that time and uh, the situation went with the with the dis- discrepancies disagreements and all the rest of it went all the way to 3 days before january 20th of 1877 we also had most recently the situation in 2000 the election with uh, george w bush when he won against uh, al gore that was decided uh, in the infamous chad uh, episode in florida the state of florida where eventually george w uh, herbert uh, george w bush was declared the uh, winner by about 535 or so votes and al gore graciously accepted uh, the trajectory we have seen so far thus far is biden is the leader uh, with pennsylvania with others president trump and the trump campaign have initiated some legal action normally in such action it goes before a lower court and you have to prove to them that there has been direct fraud in either the counting of ballots or in the manipulation of ballots or something like that Uh, one of the unprecedented things that has happened already as we speak right now is that uh, the Trump campaign has decided to approach the Supreme Court usually you can't go directly to the Supreme Court but there is an exception if there appears to be widespread fraud if you can bring before the court the Supreme Court uh proof that look we need you guys the Supreme Court to step in then it takes five justices with the majority five justices the nine member supreme court the five justices then step in to say all right uh we order a halt to counting there has to be a really really good reason for it though unless uh, this, this there is no precedent for this by the way just halting the counting uh in an election there is no precedent for it uh but it could happen um i think we're going to have a pretty smooth way forward you are rohit you are absolutely right biden is in the lead and uh, if things don't go totally or i he should be the next president of the united states but as the saying goes nothing is done until the legal issues are resolved the legal issue will be resolved only if there is a conclusive proof conclusive proof for supreme court to admit a case that there is a widespread incidence or evidence of malpractice voter fraud non proof of citizenship these are issues that we taken care of the reason for that litigation is unlike in 
is because against all odds, you know, it beats your mind that two groups of people who have lost the jobs permanently in the United States are the poll forecasters and physiologists, as the saying goes, poll forecasters. I mean, uh, you know, there is no way anybody is ever going to trust the poll forecast. Susan Collins in Maine was losing by 17% on the day of the voting. Likewise, Wisconsin, Trump, had, uh, Biden was leading by 17%. Nationwide, 10% lead for Biden. And it was expected to the blue wave. On the contrary, Congress Democrats have lost five seats. And yes. on Thursday, I, I think on Friday, there was a major uproar in Democratic Party where some of the party members suggested to Nancy Pelosi that let's stop the use of socialism and defunding police and you know uh, you know civil society police and all that stuff because our primary members have lost major members have lost on those accounts so this country Democratic Party cannot champion a cause of socialism and immediately you have AOC saying that, well, we lost black votes and Latino votes. That's not good for the party. So you are beginning to see, I am seeing a major alignment on political forces. Whatever the legal thing is going, I'm not going to comment on that matter is under jurisdiction, Supreme Court, lower courts, as the, say, as the saying goes. But you are going to see a remarkable resurgence of a new political system emerging in America. Yeah, I, I largely agree with what Rohit and Vibhutiji said. Uh, the polling is over, in my opinion, but the election is not over. I think far from it, mm -hmm. because the election is a very long process. It has many stages. The first one, of course, is polling and the counting of votes, declaration of results, of calling of the election by, by media outlets. Then the, the losing candidate has to concede the election, and there's supposed to be a transition. And that process go on, goes on till January 20th. This is a very, very long process. But on the night of the election, November 3rd, Donald Trump announced that he is going to the Supreme Court because there is a what he called a major fraud in the election. So that has set the tone for the next three months. Uh, we're going to see a lot of bickering, a lot of legal battles in, in this month and till, the, till January, unless the matter is resolved very quickly, which I don't think because the Supreme Court does take time to come to a conclusion. And the Democrats too are prepared for it because it was it was surprising that Biden was doing very well on 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 the on November fourth, but they set up a fund, collect money for a legal battle, which means both the sides are ready for a legal battle. So if this election has to be decided in the Supreme Court, I don't think there'll be a smooth transition. Not in the sense the 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 candidate may not accept the result, but uh, there'll be. A lot of bad blood, a lot of bickering, and that's not a good sign for the country. So I think this election, uh, the country was very divided before the election. There's supposed to be closure after the election. That has not happened. And I don't see that happening very quickly unless a matter is resolved, uh, uh, which is acceptable to both the parties. I don't think that's going to happen. With that note, we're going to take a break. And when we come back, we're, all, we're going to touch on very, very important topic that once the election is over and if Joe Biden is the winner, what will happen next? That's coming up right after this message is please don't go anywhere. Radio Zindagi has left the listeners awestruck and glued to our jovial, infotaining, yesteryears and entertaining programs from East Coast to West Coast. Tune in now to America's biggest South Asian radio network, Radio Zindagi, in New York, New Jersey, Connecticut and in San Francisco and San Jose on 1170 AM. The world is listening to Radio Radio Zindagi is also available on apps on iOS, Android, Alexa, and online. Download now. All right, welcome back to the Eye on a White House show. Right before the break, uh, when uh, Shobhan Saxena ended his comment with, uh, you know, what's going to happen next, I want to pick it up from there. If Joe Biden finally is the winner of this presidential election, will he be able to unite United States of America? That is the number one question. It's, it's, a, it's a million dollar question or billion dollar question because, you know, uh, he gave a very good speech, very good sentiments uh, saying that he will be president of all Americans. Uh, it's not blue states, it's not red states, it's United States. 
it's a very good very good idea it sounds very good but when you put into practicality uh, uh, in terms of policies how will he do it he didn't spell it out people see each other if not as enemies was adversaries and the the feelings are very very running high emotions are very high people already out on the street are not suggesting there will be some kind of violence it may not happen but the acceptance of defeat is going to be very, very tough you know uh, and for that we need a really statesman like behavior and vision both sides one side will not do both the leaders have to come together on the same podium and say we are doing this for the good of america if that happens we have a closure otherwise this will open like a festering wound I, I think I think the wound has festered. Uh, the, the party line, the country is unfortunately divided. On the complete extremes are driving the middle, and uh, you know Biden will definitely. He he's been in politics for forty seven years. He knows how to say the right things. So I'm leading everybody. I'm nobody. Nobody's enemy. But reality is that you fought a very bitter battle, where abuses were hurled and nothing was left to chance. So you don't cut down on those things so easily. You don't forget that. You you know you, you can't forget and forgive both at the same time. So yeah, you 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 learn to move on, but you remember what the other person had said. So Biden is a master politician. He has been long experience. So he knows how to say the right things. Just as in 1988, he borrowed the phrase from many others and was accused of plagiarism. It, here also, when he talks about red, blue, and we are the United States, that he borrowed by uh, Obama's statement. So it is not his statement. People who are acute observers notice that part. Uh, so that's that's very important to know. But that's the right thing to say. Of course, we will have to say that. But the unity part is still wide open because unity will come because both parties are threatening of retaliation, and uh, it is. It is going to be a tough time here, especially when you see the streets of New York. You know, you had so much Antifa led uh, agitation going on prior to the during the vote counting as well. An Indian girl was seen spitting in the face of a New York City police cop and arrested her. And the crowd was jostling at that point in time. These are not good signs. The street violence in America is of a very different kind. It makes me sad. I want to agree with both Vibhuti and Shobhan on your assertions. And I'd like to add uh, to this, both of you have mentioned the fact that uh, uh, Vice President Biden, the former Vice President, and now possibly President-elect Biden, uh, has been a skilled politician and astute politician. One particular quality he has had is being able to reproach, bring about reproachment, and that is unity. He, is, he has the ability to reach out to members of the Senate. Now, don't forget, uh, Vibhuti, you mentioned it. A lot of seats were lost in Congress this time. At least five or six seats were lost by the Democrats, but they still have that majority in Congress. However, the key is the Senate. And from the looks of it, uh, as of now, the Senate will still be with the Republicans. What does that spell? That spells possible gridlock for the next four years. Biden has the ability to reach out to his opponents. He's had that uh, historical record of reaching out and bringing about compromise. If that works, we'll see unity. If it doesn't, and we see gridlock, gridlock is the key. If legislative uh, matters do not get passed to benefit the people, all people of the United States, this festering wound will open up even further. If they're all able to work together and come to legislative compromise, because the executive branch is not gonna be able to do anything alone in this new, after this election, we can, you can just see it ahead of you the next four years. Only then, if there's unity within all the branches, legislative branch, executive branch, working together, uh, will we see unity. Otherwise, uh, Biden talking about unity by himself is not going to work. Because if there's frustration out there among anyone who feels neglected, uh, those who did uh, support Trump, we're going to have trouble ahead. Oh, absolutely. There are about 70 million people, close to 70 million people who supported Trump and they're not going to take it easy. I mean, you know, and uh, while we are speculating that, uh, yes, you know, Biden 
is a, a polished and very experienced politician and he will be able to do that but again there's going to be majority in the senate by republicans congress as uh, rohit uh, you said that uh, will be with democrats but it's going to be very very difficult to unite um you know everyone here in america that's going to be perhaps one of the biggest challenges that Joe Biden and his administration will be facing. But let's see what happens. Now we're going to go for the break. And when we come back, we're going to talk about what does Joe Biden's administration mean for Indo-US relations. That's coming up right after this message. Please don't go anywhere. Radio Zindagi has left the listeners awestruck and glued to our jovial, infotaining, yesteryears and entertaining programs from East Coast to West Coast. Tune in now to America's biggest South Asian radio network, Radio Zindagi, in New York, New Jersey, Connecticut and in San Francisco and San Jose on 11.70 AM. Dunya sun rahi hai aur aap to phir Radio Zindagi ke sang jiye ja aur maze liye ja. Radio Zindagi is also available on apps on iOS, Android, Alexa and online. Download now. Welcome back to the I on a White House show. Now we're going to talk about Indo-US relationship. Uh, during Donald Trump's administration, you know, between India and the US relationship has been very, very solid. We all know Donald Trump and India's uh, Prime Minister Narendra Modi, they've been very, very good friends and they have maintained good relationship. Going forward, Joe Biden, becomes the president and his administration. What kind of effect will it have on the Indo-US relations? Let's find out. Uh, I, my thought would be that, you know, taking the cue from what Rohit said earlier on, is that the gridlock, if it were to happen between uh, executive, judiciary and legislature, Trump and the administ uh, uh, sorry, Biden administration would be too busy to taking care of America than the step into foreign relations. However, as we all know, uh, you know, statecraft is a multi-layered business. You know, there are foundations laid down. The foundations are laid, not laid down by a spur of the moment action. They are part of a geopolitical strategy that gets implemented. So Indo-Pacific Indo or uh, region, that name stays, initiatives will stay. They will not be scrapped because there is a, that is a very important relationship of US, India, Australia, and Japan. And that is meant to contain China. Now here is the China factor in Biden's life. So what is going to likely to happen is, is that Biden will go, might go slow on China, or just to prove that he is not in China's pocket, he may end up being tougher on China, who knows? Because you know, in international relationship, everything matters as a visual exercise as well as real exercise. I have a feeling though Pakistanis have been writing the India narrative on Jammu, Kashmir and Ladakh and say Article 370 and 35A, Kamala Harris is on record saying that Kashmiris don't forget we are with you, we remember. The question is that take care of your black lives. You know, now India has gotten aggressive. Before you preached, earlier India used to take lying down, take it lying down, jane bhi do yaro attitude. Now it is not going to happen because India is going to assert itself. Don't lecture me when your own house is not in order. So you are going to see short term, medium term and long term scenario. And in the short term, you may see a slowdown of the expanding relationship that Trump had initiated. The based on trust and confidence that Modi and Trump enjoyed. It may have a slowdown. India's talk of UNSC membership may slow down. And Maybe Biden will not be that aggressive, but that's where it stays. Long term perspective, India, US have had a really enigmatic relationship. And I think we will go back to that stage. I'm actually even more optimistic than uh, Vibhuti's last sentence there. Uh, I think it's all going to be status quo. The reason for it is the strategic partnership between India and the US has been cultivated since the uh, George W. Bush era. Okay. Um, the United States has focused on the Asia Pacific region with China in mind, exactly with the possible aggression at that time from the Chinese, internationally speaking, uh, on the rest of the world. And the natural ally, India. India had the same look east policy and strategically for both countries. So basically, foreign policy of the United States depends on its strategic international interests. 
And the same for India. Its uh, foreign policy is shaped by its strategic international interests. Both of these have converged now for several years. They both have very, very similar um, you know, strategic interests. Uh, throw in Israel over there, Australia, Vibhuti mentioned. Uh, you've got some very strategic interests going on in Japan. Uh, I don't think it's, it's going to be shaken at all. I think it's going to remain strong. Uh, if the Biden administration, as Vibhuti mentioned, would be preoccupied with making America great, keeping America great, etc., to keep people happy here in this country, there is a very competent uh, civil service, uh, uh, you know, structure in the United States and a very competent civil structure system in the in India. Yeah, I think the the ideas have been very well articulated by Vibhuti Ji and Rohit. So I would like to just add a bit to it. Now, Ronald Reagan was president for eight years, and he never went to India, and he was once asked why he didn't go to India and he said famously that he's been to India in his sleep. So the joke was that once Reagan was traveling from Philippines to back to US and his plane stopped for refueling uh, in Delhi, uh, but he was asleep at the time. So he never saw India. Uh, and Indians have been complaining about it and got very upset when Ronald Reagan said that. And people always wondered in India why American presidents don't visit India. Uh, that was in 2000 when Bill Clinton went to India, of course, in his second term. And since then, all American presidents have visited India. George W. Bush, uh, uh, Obama went twice. Trump went in his first term. Uh, so the relationship actually has been changing the coming together since 2000. But I think the turning point was a 2008 nuclear deal. And as Prime Minister Modi recently said, that is the, now the cornerstone of, of India-US relations. The countries are in very, very tight strategic embrace. They need each other. India needs the U.S. for its security concerns, for its economic growth, for China being the main reason. And the U.S. needs India for its influence and geostrategic goals in the uh, Asia-Pacific region, Indo-Pacific region. So that relationship, say relations between big countries are long term. They don't change with the, with the personalities. They don't change with the change of government. So I think they're going to stay uh, very close to each other. Uh, and it's, I'm not saying it's a, it's a marriage of convenience. It's, it's a very, very powerful relationship between the two uh, biggest democracies in the world. And that I don't see any change happening in that direction uh, for a long time to come. OK, only time will tell how that's going to work out, because Biden's, you know, uh, a very strong relationship with China in the past years. And uh, obviously, we know how Donald Trump's relationship was uh, with, with China. So now that's going to play a very important role that which way Joe Biden is going to be leaning, you know, more either towards China or India. But like I said, only time will tell. Meantime, gentlemen, I want to thank you so much for your time, for your comments and for your views in this Eye on a White House show as we're keeping our fingers crossed. Let's hope for the better future for United States of America. Thank you. You take Thank care. You. You Thank, take you. Care. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for watching the Eye on White House once again. This is the videos in the initiative. I am Sanjeev Pandya, wishing you all happy and safe days ahead. So long.